Welcome to It's All About You, a program that keeps you connected to all the exciting events, services, and businesses the city of Urbana has to offer. We're your hosts, Sterling Bowman and Natalie Kenny Marquez. Today we're at the Independent Media Center in downtown Urbana with Public Arts Coordinator Pauline Tanos. Morning. Good Hi. Morning. Thanks for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on. So, we understand you have an important event coming up here soon. Yes, so this event is a collaboration between the City of Urbana and the IMC here. Um, so we are going to have this series of art workshops, civic dialogues, and art showcases. But what's different is we're going to put marginalized youth at the center of it all. So we would like to hear their voices. Um, and right now we're taking applications. We're hoping to um, get youth to apply who perhaps feel like maybe um, their voices are not being heard enough in downtown Urbana but we're also inviting adult applicants. So um, the youth will work with the adults and professional artists to um, do all these activities. And how did this program come about? I know there's a lot of hard work and partnerships involved, but let us know a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. Um, it was a lot of hard work. Um, well, the city and the IMC decided to apply for a federal grant together, and we were actually funded by the NEA for $50,000, which is very exciting. Um, and now that we've secured that funding, we can move forward, and now um, we're in the planning process. and. Um, getting applicants um, to apply and then hopefully next semester we can kick it off. So you said you're partnering with the IMC for this one. Uh, is this the first time you've ever partnered with them for this? Yeah, well, um, personally myself, yes. Um, okay. Although we, we work, you know, in smaller projects. I mean, they're here in the center of downtown Urbana yeah. and they do a lot of art initiatives. Um, so we've been in communications for a long time, but this is, I guess, the first big federally funded project that we were working together. Okay, nice. Yeah. And the programming that you're planning, will it all take place here at this building or is it spread out throughout the downtown area? Um, all the major activities will be at the IMC um, and then maybe there might be smaller activities that may be outside of the IMC, it's not decided yet. Mm -hmm. um, but we would like to, um, I guess, highlight the IMC as again the center of downtown Urbana and also a community center. Um, it's very welcoming to people of all backgrounds, including youth, and we want youth to have a place to go, you know, after school, um, to not just to shop or eat, but also to make and be a part of the community. And I'm, I probably should have asked this earlier in our interview, but IMC, what does that stand for? I know that it says it on the sign right behind us, but yeah. for maybe <laughs> those folks that have um, driven by or stopped in at the post office right next door, um, maybe you can speak to their organization a little bit. Sure. Uh, well, IMC stands for Independent Media Center, um, and they do work such as um, in media justice, they do a lot of advocacy, and they have community meetings here, um, some art events, they have a gallery here, um, so yeah, a community center. So it sounds like a great partnership for a project like this. I think so. Is this the first time this has happened or is this something that happens every year or what exactly? Are you hoping it's something that happens every year? Well, this is just a one-time project, I would say, for now. Um, and then once we learn more from these youth, um, what they would like to see, what they would like to experience in downtown Urbana, we may have follow-ups after that um, according to what they ask for. Fantastic. And Pauline, I know you're always busy with the public arts program and you also have um, grants and mm -hmm. you just wrapped up a very successful art expo. Um, there's art um, in the corridor of the city building. Mm -hmm. Where can we find out more about all these fantastic things you're doing for the city of Urbana? Well, you can go to urbanaillinois.us um, slash arts and you'll hear about all of our events there, or you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or subscribe to our e-newsletter. Wonderful. Very Thank nice. you, Pauline. Yeah. Well, it's always oh. a... Oh, yes, Sorry. please. <laughs> more. There's more. I, I forgot to mention, there's a website that you can go uh, to apply to be part of Open Scene, um, and it's at ucimc.org um, slash open underscore scene. Or you can also pick up hard copies at the City Building, the IMC, uh, Urbana Free Library, Champaign Public Library, Douglas Branch Library, and Phillips Recreation Center. Wonderful. And then just a quick reminder, this event is happening when and when? Um, the deadline for you to apply is November 1st. Okay. Um, so apply and then the events will start in the spring semester. Okay, perfect. Nice. Wonderful. Well, thank you for being on the program, and we'll have to come back and find out how the uh, program is doing uh, next semester. Yeah, thank you. All Thanks, right. Pauline.
Welcome back to It's All About You. We are here at the Anita Purvis Nature Center here with Savannah Donovan. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. All right, so you want to just tell us a little bit about uh, what exactly is the Anita Purvis Nature Center? Well, a lot of people in Urbana are surprised to learn that the Nature Center has been here since 1979. Wow. So we're going on <laughs> 37 years here. Um, and over the course of that time, we have served so many members of the community um, through school programs, environmental public programs, events, okay. um, and we're here in our field station right now, so this is a place where anybody can come. It's free, open to the public, okay. um, and kids can come and explore. We invite them to touch all of the exhibits um, to see our exhibit wildlife. So Natalie's got one of our corn snakes <laughs> here. <laughs> But we also have box turtles and owls as well. Okay, and then like are all, all these animals are from Illinois, correct? You just, it's all right from here? Right, well at the Nature Center we really want to teach people about local mm -hmm. environment, um, local nature, so what kinds of things can you find in your own backyard? And um, probably not a lot of us are gonna find a corn snake in our backyard. <laughs> I think the corn snake really wants to go in my pocket. <laughs> it's nice and warm. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we focus on central Illinois ecology, um, things that you can find in Illinois. Um, the corn snake, however, um, you won't find a, a beautiful orange corn snake like this. <laughs> she, she was bred in a pet store. Um, but we have other representatives of, of native reptiles here. And yeah, we like to teach about local insects, plants, animals. So do you do a lot of tours out here? Do you have a lot of like uh, events that you handle out here? Absolutely, yeah. Just this past Saturday, we had a fundraiser event. Um, we are building a nature playscape right okay. outside the nature center. Nice. So if people haven't been here before, once the playscape is open, I think that's really going to put us on the map a little bit more. Um, it's going to be an area where kids and families can play with nature in sort of a safe environment so it's not like taking your child out into the middle of the woods and maybe you don't know if a plant is safe or if it's okay for a kid to climb on this log but at the nature playscape it's an environment where we encourage that so um, like I said we had a fundraiser event um, we have lots of fun family events coming up in November we have both the owl liberation Oh. where we're celebrating our nature center owls um, and America recycles day as well I see wow that's awesome yeah so do you have to have an appointment to come on a tour or can you just stop in? What, what's the... Well, if you're coming with your family or your friends, you don't have to make any kind of appointment. We do ask that larger groups call and let us know sure. that they're coming just so that you know we don't have too many big groups here at once. Right. But it's totally free to come and visit. Um, people can request programs though. So maybe your club or your church group or your school wants to request a, a program about owls yeah. or about snakes where you get to meet the reptiles. Right. <laughs> we do charge fees for those kinds of programs. Okay. And we can do those here at the Nature Center or we can travel to other locations as well. Ah, so you have, have snake will travel. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. And I know I mentioned before our interview, I remember coming here as a kid growing up in Champaign-Urbana area. Um, but now coming back again as an adult, this place is fascinating and there's so much information here. Um, and this is all part of the Urbana Park District, right? That's right. That's right. That's wonderful. Um, what it, where can folks go to learn more about the Park District, specifically the Native Purpose Nature Center and all the great programs you have? Well, offer. everything is on the Urbana Park District website, so you can just search that in your search engine. Um, the website is urbanaparks.org, and there is a page for the Nature Center. Um, we're free here at the Nature Center. It's free to come uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., um, but you can learn more about how to request a program. Our contact information is on there. Um, as well as information about the upcoming nature playscape. Wonderful. And I, before we wrap up, maybe we can go check out the area where the playscape is going to be located? Oh, sure. Yeah, it's just outside the building here. All right. Well, let's, let's put this uh, beauty back in his or her cage. Her cage. Her cage. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go check that out. Okay, sounds great. 
So we moved just outside of the Nature Center to Friendship Grove where there is a lot of construction happening and some excitement with um, some of the things you've been telling us about. I know you mentioned there's a gate going up and a lovely yeah. pathway and the story behind these trees. Tell us a little bit more. <laughs> Well, we're standing, like you said, in the Friendship Grove, just outside the Nature Center. And um, this grove of trees uh, are trees that were planted in recognition of donors who have given money to the park district over time. Um, well, a few years ago, we started asking kids what they wanted in a nature playground. And a lot of kids really wanted to be in and around trees. Yeah. And so this place just made the most perfect sense um, so we have not had to remove any trees in the construction of the playscape and um, that will continue to be the case. Um, our larger older oak trees are protected so we're keeping them um, sort of away from the main play features. So trees are a really important part of the park district of course, yeah. but the, the playscape <laughs> especially. Um, so we're still in the uh, fundraising process for the nature playscape and we're still accepting donations. Um, we are doing something special for our donors who give five thousand dollars or more there is an artist who um, we've commissioned some giant insect sculptures from so <laughs> they're pretty fantastic they're pretty neat so um if somebody donates five thousand dollars or more they'll get one of those giant insects at the playscape mounted somewhere among the trees nice <laughs> That's fantastic. yeah so so far we have um a cicada two butterflies and that great big praying mantis that's inside the nature center right now. Wonderful. If um, people watching want to make a donation or um, come learn more about this project, um, where can they go to make that donation? Well, we have more information on our website, so go to urbanaparks.org. Um, through there, you can link to our online generosity site. It's okay. through Indiegogo. So yep. Um, generosity is a place where anybody can make any size donation and of course we welcome you know donations of five dollars even anything is, is really helpful at this point any additional funds that we get are just gonna make the playscape even better even cooler so it's gonna help us afford some extra big boulders for kids to jump on and uh, more plants that we're gonna be planting around the area. And understanding that you're still in the fundraising stage, what is the project timeline? Well, our grand opening will be on Earth Day. Okay. Oh, wow. 2017. Nice. All right. So that's April 22nd. Okay. It's a Saturday, and um, we will have festivities for the public on that day. It's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> so we're gonna open no matter what, but like I said, the more money that we raise, we can just add more to mm -hmm. the playscape. Um, a nature playscape though is, it's organic, so the wood is going to rot over time, things are gonna change. So this is something that the park district will constantly be um, working with and evolving. You know, this space will continue to change over time. Yep. Yeah. Hopefully we can come back for your opening celebration. We would love that. Oh yeah, That'll, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be great. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time and sharing information about the Anita Purvis Nature Center. You're so welcome. About the Friendship Grove and all the exciting things that are uh, building up yeah. to open next year. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Hello, and welcome back to It's All About You. I'm here with Barb Gallivan of Keller Williams Realty. How are you today? I'm good, Sterling. How are you? Oh, I'm not bad at all. So you're part, you were part of an interesting event that just recently wrapped up, right? Yes. Earlier in the month, we had the Home Builders Association Showcase of Homes, and it was a parade this year in several different subdivisions, a little different than what's been done in the past. In the past, we've had it in just one subdivision. Six or seven builders get together, build houses, stage the houses, and then show them off to the public. Um, this year it was a little bit different. We're modeling some other cities around the country, and they are doing more of a parade of homes where they do it in several different subdivisions. Okay. So we had um, seven subdivisions between Champaign, Urbana, and Savoy, and um, had 24 houses total and had a hugely successful event. Oh, very nice, that's awesome. So how, how long have you been a part of this showcase of homes? 
Well, the Showcase of Homes has been running for 20 plus years. There were a few years in the downed um, economy when they weren't doing the showcase because right. building wasn't as prevalent. Um, but for the last 20 years, it's been pretty steady. Um, I did my first showcase of homes out here in Stone Creek um, probably about 15 years ago when Stone Creek just was developed and have been participating on and off throughout the years. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm, assu I'm assuming this is a huge event. I'm assuming it's fairly successful every year. So how much planning and preparation goes into one of these events? Well, it is a huge event mm -hmm. because to build a house takes about four to five to six months. Mm -hmm. And then to landscape and to stage and everything that's going on, it really does take a lot of time, effort, and energy um, for many, many people. Um, different subs that come in and build the house and put things together. Um, so it, it, it's a lot of people, a lot of time, but um, the end result is looking at um, many people from the community get to look at many different houses. Um, this year was kind of unique and special in the fact that we had houses in all different price ranges and we had um, houses from zero lot lines to single family homes and also the introduction of a 55 plus community. Um, in a uh, Southridge subdivision called the Cottages. Okay. So um, different price points and um, it, was, it was just a, a great time. Okay, now um, are these always new homes? Like do you, when doing the showcase of homes, is it always newly built homes or do you sometimes showcase like maybe homes on the market? What, what exactly is that? It is all newly built homes. Okay. Homes that have never been lived in okay. and um, kind of showing the new um, building trends um, for the year. Okay, that's awesome. Um, if people want to find out some more information about this kind of event or, you know, want to find out when the events are, is there a website or something they can go to? Yes, www.showcaseofhomes.com. All right, perfect. And is there anything else that you feel uh, you want to get out about the Showcase of Homes? Or? Well, I would just like to thank all of the um, builders mm -hmm. and the um, subcontractors that helped, the landscaping companies, um, stagers. The realtor community and um, the Home Builders Association themselves put a great event on, and I was um, proud and pleased to be part of it. All right, well, awesome. That's great, and good luck on future uh, showcases of homes. And thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. Sir. Hello, and welcome back to It's All About You. We're here at the Urbana Public Library with uh, Joel Spencer here. And Joel, what is your role at the library? So my title is Adults and Teen Services Librarian. All right, perfect. And what are we standing out in front of here right now? Well, this is a project that uh, some teens uh, and library staff came up with in the spring. Um, we called it uh, the Urbana Free Library Bee and Butterfly Garden. Okay. Um, it's basically a pollinator garden that supports um, butterflies, moths, bees, uh, hummingbirds, uh, and um, you know anything that's, that that pollinates outside of mammals. So I see. Yeah. Okay, that's really interesting. And you just had a big event kind of kicking that off, or mm -hmm. at least kicking off the little free library, right? Yeah, it was sort of a hybrid event to uh, celebrate these two projects that we were working on um, in collaboration with uh, a bunch of partners um, that just sort of ended up coming together in the same physical space. So we thought we would uh, just highlight it and bring it to everyone's attention that we're doing this kind of work and, mm -hmm. uh, and that we also have a little free library now. Okay, and what exactly is the Little Free Library? So it's a pretty simple idea. It started, I think, in 2005. Um, it's basically a take a book, leave a book. Mm -hmm. And it's a way to create kind of a fun way of uh, promoting community. So people, uh, you know, they talk about it, gather around it. They know what books are in there. They can, you know, switch stuff out. Um, and also to promote uh, literacy and just okay. a, a, a love of reading. Nice. That yeah. sounds interesting. And uh, now that's been here for how long now? That ju you just put that in, right? Yeah, we literally put that in two days ago. Okay, well, there we go. All right. And then, uh, so a lot of people probably don't know about this Be a Butterfly Garden. Mm -hmm. uh, they probably think a library, just books and nothing else. So sure. what exactly was it that made you guys decide to 
you know, put this in here? Well, it, it all started with, um, we have, we have an after school program called the Teen Open Lab here okay. on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoons. And it's a teen run program. So we kind of take our cue uh, from what the teens tell us they want to do. Okay. And it was early spring and um, we were sort of casually talking about putting gardens in. And I was putting mine in at home and some of the teens parents were starting to think about the same thing. And I, uh, one of the kids said, well, why can't we do that here? And I said, well, maybe we can. Let's go try and find a place. And it kind of snowballed from there. Originally, it was going to be stuff we could eat. Yeah. <laughs> but then uh, we started um, hearing more about the pollinator issue and how the, the bee population has is, is, uh, really been affected. And um, monarchs are down, I think, 80%, the, oh. the American population. Um, and, you know, kind of slightly different stories, but, you know, the monarchs travel from Canada to Mexico and they rely on a food source along the way. Um, and due to many environmental factors, that's, you know, there's, there's not that much around. So we wanted to build this to, uh, to help a little bit um, and then realize that maybe we could expand it and use it as a sort of reference for other people in the community okay. who might want to do the same thing uh, where they live. I see. Now, like, who's in charge of taking care of this? Like, Well, originally it was a teen program, <laughs> but as it gets hot, <laughs> um, we did lose some, uh, some, some excitement, I'll say, I gotcha. about that. Okay. Uh, but we also had a lot of other great partners working on it. We had volunteers from the library school that were working with us already in the Teen Open Lab. Um, and they helped with the garden a lot. We got a lot of great advice from uh, Derek Liebert and everybody at the Urbana Park District. Okay. And uh, Scott Tess, who's the uh, uh, environmental sustainability manager at the city, he came and um, gave us some great advice and would um, occasionally show up and plant things. Okay, yeah. Um, so it's kind of been a, a, a sort of community-wide okay. effort. And now what is exactly the life cycle of this garden? Like, how you know, when do you kind of start planting everything? And then when does it kind of like, when does it become like died out almost? So most of these, um, if they do, if, if you could consider them uh, perennial, it's only because they reseed themselves, I okay. think. Um, so mostly it's, it's like a typical even vegetable garden. You put it in an early spring, it goes through um, uh, even into late fall. The idea is that we want to make sure we hit the windows with the migratory pattern of the, yeah. of the butterflies um, and also be here for when bees are going to be most active. Um, what's interesting about this kind of garden is that as it goes out in the fall, as you sort of put it to bed, you don't want to do too much because there are, are types of, uh, of pollinators, uh, moths and butterflies, that will uh, lay eggs on them and they'll overwinter. So you don't want to tear everything out. Yeah. You, you really want to just sort of put it down, maybe cover it with a leaf bed um, and all that will come back the next year. All right, well that's really interesting. And now if people want to be a part of this, if they want to kind of uh, if there is a way to be a part of it, where can they go to find out some more information? Um, they can just contact the library. Okay. They can email me at jspencer at urbanafree.org. Okay. Um, I have a, I'm starting to compile a lot of uh, in information about where else um, you, you can find information about this. Um, but yeah, just contact the library. We would love to see where we could go with this next year. All right, perfect. Well, it looks like the bees are enjoying it at least right now. Perfect. So. Thank you very much for agreeing to do this. Oh, this is great. Thanks for the opportunity. All right.